I feel like people are talking more about their waffle fries than their chicken. It's not waffle filet. Waffle filet? Chick filet. I think we should take a second to talk about mine. So we love what we're seeing with Papa Tapa. Thank you so much, we appreciate it. We're about to sell out on many of our items, so don't forget to get your own before it runs out because it's not coming back. The link is in the description. Love ya. Okay, so today we are making the Chick-fil-A waffle fry. Wow, we're talking about the fries that are chicken fast food joint. How does that make sense? This has become significantly more prominent over the years. Waffle shaped crisscross holy potato fry. When I say holy, I mean holes in it before that gets misconstrued. So with all that being said, let's make this, shall we? We're at Chick-fil-A. I just got back from Vikram's wedding. <laughs> if you are wondering why I look raggedy, that's why. All right, we're at the three-point system. This place is pretty raggedy because they're performing construction, but I get it, so I'm gonna give them a seven out of 10. It's always been very organized. Make that an eight out of 10. The menu, we know what's on the Chick-fil-A menu. I like that they keep it simple, but I don't like their five. Oh. Five out of 10. Service is all, I don't, I don't even need to meet the people to give the service a 10 out of 10. The service is always insane. I don't know how they do it. Can I just get two orders of fries? Sure. Thank you so much, appreciate it. Well, we might as well do the taste test in here. You thought. Not in the car, you nasty So we got the bag. Chick-fil-A sauce, we're familiar with that. Kate loves these fries, and uh, we're gonna analyze it right now. I've always wondered, how the hell do you get this shape in the first place? Right off the bat, zero salt. The fry on it isn't as good as I thought it would be. The beauty of a waffle fry is it should be crispy. It should be undeniably glass-like and full of flavor, and it has all those ridges to catch salt, and yet you didn't put any on it. And with the clout that these have, Come on. And I'm sure people are thinking, can you even make the shape? We're gonna do a whole lot more than that. Ah, yet another iconic item that seems impossible to make, right? Wrong. It's beautifully simple. But Josh, we need to know how to get that gap dang shape. Sure, you could just sit there and whittle your way into oblivion one slice at a time with a knife. And I'm sure whatever waffle fry producer has a monstrosity of a machine that can make them a quintillion at a time. Or you can get a mandolin with a crinkle cut attachment. Here's the trick. Get yourself a recipe potato. For this recipe, you'll need about four large ones, which will easily produce enough fries for four to six people. Uh, and make sure you wash them because we're not going to be peeling them. Set your crinkle cut mandolin to about a half inch thickness setting. Start by slicing your potato one Way, like you would normally, and once you've created some nice grooves on the potato, quarter turn so the grooves now run against the grooves on the mandolin. Slice once, quarter turn, slice again, quarter turn, slice again. See where I'm going here? That's what's going to get you that wacky, holy looking waffle fry thing that tantalizes us, delights us. I mean, look at these. Now, repeat this process with all your titers. Get yourself a large pot, fill it with about four quarts of water, one tablespoon of 14 grams of vinegar, one tablespoon of 10 grams of baking soda, one tablespoon of 15 grams of kosher salt. Bring to a boil, add in your titers, and cook for about 30 seconds or just until soft. Do not overcook these. Remove and dry off any water with a paper towel. Cool completely. Place them on multiple baking sheets, whichever fits, you know, I don't know. Figure it out, right? Spatial analytical skills are good. And place those in the freezer overnight. Wah! You gotta wait for it. Now you listen to me, pal. You better not skip this gap bang step and then whine to me in the comments how it didn't work. Oh, but Josh, I only changed this entire method. Arguably, you could just freeze them and leave them in your freezer until you want waffle fries for the homies. Now let's talk sauce. Obviously ketchup or mayo, if you're real, but obviously we have our own chicken. Chick-fil-A sauce. This one's a little different than the last one. Get yourself a bowl and add one and a quarter cup or 140 grams of mayo, a third cup or 83 grams of Dijon mustard, two tablespoons or 29 grams of yellow mustard, one tablespoon or 12 grams of ketchup, a quarter teaspoon, which is less than a gram, of cayenne pepper, one teaspoon or three grams of smoked paprika, one clove of garlic grated, a third cup or 90 grams of honey, salt and pepper to taste, two teaspoons or 28 grams of lemon juice. Whisk all that together until thoroughly combined and well, that's actually, that's it. American sauces are real different than them god dang French ones or just about literally anywhere else. And you know what? Kind of tastes good. Now notice, depending on the mayo you add, this all also benefits from a couple tablespoons of smoky barbecue sauce, which will help give it a little bit more of a classic taste if you like. And obviously there's MSG for a magical ride through the valley of labor. All right, hard part's over. Now buckle up them pants. Make them tight for Papa. And let's finish this. Grab yourself a seven to eight quart heavy bottom pot filled about halfway with vegetable oil and heat to 350 Fahrenheit. Drop in your potatoes directly from the freezer. I repeat, while they are frozen, yes, you're frying the fries from frozen out of the freezer. While they are frozen from the freezer, they were freezing in and are still frozen. Chili boy. Fry those bad boys for one to three minutes or until your fries are beautifully crisp, stiff, and lightly golden brown. Remove from the oil, drain on a wire rack, and immediately season a taste with salt. Don't wait. Seriously, season them while they're hotter than the Earth's atmosphere in today's climate, unfortunately. So that the salt sticks. Repeat with all your frozen boys, and guess what? That is just a stunning jewel of a waffle fry if I've ever seen one. So now we're going to find our winner. Here we go. Woo -wee! Give it a little dip. Wow. The sauce is great, but sauce... 
aside. The crunch on the outside is great. It's nice and fragile. It's not too crunchy. It's not too soft. And the inside, fluffy like a fine whipped potato puree. That's a dub to me, but we're gonna bring Vikram in today for the taste test. Hi, Vikram. Hello. Here is number one. Number two, ba ba bia bao. That is it. Second one, definitely the winner. When I saw how thin they were, I didn't think they'd be fluffy. They were very fluffy, crispy, salty, all around. Yeah, yeah, wait a minute. So, any type of fry is gonna behave differently when you cook it. This, on the other hand, I would argue is one of the easiest to get right. So if you're gonna take the time to make something, make this. But you wanna know what else you should make? B-roll. 